Hi everyone, it's Sabrina here and I have another card for you guys. This card is actually a pop-up box card and so I'm going to spend majority of the time telling you the construction of the box rather than the Copic coloring just so that this video isn't super long. So I have a 10.5 by 5.5 yellow piece of cardstock here and I'm scoring it at 2.5, 5, 7.5, and, and 10 on the long side. And then I will flip it over and on the five and a half side I will score it at three. So that's pretty much all the scoring that you'll need to do. The next thing we're going to do here is do some cutting. What I'm doing here is I'm marking down the score lines where you have to cut. So there's a shorter side with kind of squares and then there's more of a side with rectangles. So the ones with the squares is the ones where you want to cut. Now our paper is at 10 and a half and we scored at 10 leaving us with half of an inch of a tab at the end and you'll see that I put marks to cut out that tab in the square section because we won't be needing that at all. We'll actually need the tab on the rectangular section so I'm just going to take the square section completely off if that makes any sense at all because we're going to need the longer side of that tab and um, then I'm going to cut those square panels all the way up to the three inch score line and I won't have to cut further than that and that those things those little squares are going to be the flaps of our box here I'm grabbing some double sided tape and I really recommend a strong tape because this is basically the only thing that's holding your box together so score tape is probably the best of what I would recommend. And the next thing that I'm going to do is fold the score lines and also the tab. And it should be fairly easy to connect the front end to the back end. And that's your box. And it seems like it might be a lot of work, but I actually did like 12 of these in maybe 45 minutes. Now I'm going to take some leftover scraps of that yellow paper that I cut and these strips, I think they're about half an inch, they're going to be what's going to hold my images. So I'm giving them about an inch longer, so half an inch on each side, longer than the width of my box. And that way I will fold each end of that tab half an inch inwards, if that makes sense. So half an inch on one end and then half an inch on the other end. and Sometimes you have to eyeball it if you're not going to be exactly measuring, which is something I didn't do. But if you want to be exact, I would do an inch wider than your width and then fold each end at half an inch. Here I didn't do that, I kind of just eyeballed and fiddled around with it till it looked like it would fit in the box. And then what I would do is add some more of that double sided tape onto each end. And just to save tape, I like to tear it in half because I did make a lot of boxes and didn't have that much tape left. So here I'm just adding them all and I just bend them and kind of see if it will fit. And then I just add some more tape to those. And then you can use one as kind of like a template for the others. So here I'm just layering the other one on top of the one that's not and that'll give me the same exact fold. Then I'll go ahead and peel those back sheets off. And then I just put them in the box. And I find that if you fold your box flat, it will really adhere the tape onto the box. And you're pretty much set that it won't come off. These tabs are important because this is what will hold all of our pop-up images. So you really want to make sure that these are adhered to your box, otherwise your whole pop-up box will be ruined. And after these tabs are done, which I would say is probably the most difficult part of the whole process, your box is complete and all you have to do is put some pattern paper on the squares and on the rectangles. So the rectangles are two and a quarter wide and then they're two and three quarters long. So. Here I'm just showing you that you can just do it all in one strip, but I would just recommend doing two and a quarter by two and three quarters each for each little rectangle that will go on the bottom of your box. Now the squares on the top of your box, 
are two and a quarter by two and a quarter. That's pretty easy, it's just a square. And uh, then that's my square pieces. And all you do is just adhere it to the tops of your flaps. And if you want, you can also do it at the back of the flaps. I don't do it because I know some people like to write something, so I just leave it with a yellow. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is work on the images inside of my box. And I'm going to be using that cute little mouse in a nutshell from the Stampendous stamp set. And I'm going to stamp it in some memento. This current pad is actually kind of low, so I just switched to a different one. And then I'm going to be Copic coloring this image. I went ahead and put the marker caps on the side of the screen so you can see which colors I'm using. I'm going to fast forward this coloring quite a bit because it is a very small image and I really didn't do any special techniques with this little guy and I wanted the main focus to be on the box rather than the coloring. So I'll let you guys watch and I'll come back when I'm done coloring this little guy. Okay, so I'm finished coloring and the next thing I'm showing here is I'm cutting out some clouds on my Cricut. Now you can use dies, um, punches, whatever you have. I didn't have any cloud dies so I did use my Cricut here. And I cut a few because I do make a few boxes. And what I'm going to do to add some pizzazz to these clouds is add the Swiss Dots cuddle bug embossing folder to them. I wanted my little mouse to be floating in the water, so I also cut from my Cricut um, some waves. In the video, you'll see I only used one wave, but I did in the end add two. I thought it just needed to. And I'm also embossing these with a swirl, cuddle bug, embossing folder. And the next thing that I do is I'm going to cut out a little square for my sentiment. And this square is two inches by two inches. Here it is. And I'll be using the same stamp set for my sentiment. And it says, in a nutshell, dot, 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 enjoy your day. Again, I'm using Memento and stamping it onto that little square. And this is going to go on the front flap of my box. And here you can see, this is how I basically do uh, assembly line style. Yeah, so like I said, I made 12 of these. The next thing that I wanted to do, I thought the white square was kind of too white compared to the rest of my box. And I did notice I didn't have any green, and I had green on my pattern paper, so I found this green pattern paper and cut out these little hearts and flowers from this punch I got at Michael's for like a dollar each. And I'm going to put some Wink of Stella and a layer of glossy accents. Now I use a safety pin inside of my glossy accents and I don't have problems with clogging. So there's a solution 
if you have that problem. Now these are, I can't really explain what they are. They're like acrylic things I find on packaging and I'm sure you know what I mean by that. I cut them into tiny little strips. I mean not tiny because you need them to be pretty long so that they pop out of your box. But I do make them skinny because I mean I don't have a lot of these. And that's basically what holds your images. So I put my cloud on one and then I put the sun behind the cloud and then you're going to arrange them the way you want. Now this is going to be my tallest one so I want that one to be in the back. I also have two other clouds that will go inside of there and this is really the fun part. You get to see the image in your mind begin to form. So here's another cloud. I'll put some glue onto the acrylic stick there and I use three in one. This glue is amazing. It pretty much sticks as soon as you put your paper on and it dries really fast. So it's kind of perfect for this. Now I'm putting in my second little cloud and I actually have an even smaller one that I will put in there. And um, just cutting another one of those strips. This is the longest part but I think it's um, the funnest so I don't mind doing this 12 times. And I'll put in that cloud and I think the next thing I put in is my little mouse. And I put him on a teeny tiny little stick. Like I said I'm pretty stingy with these because I don't have a lot of them. I find these on packaging. I don't know what they're called really but they're pretty much on everything you buy and if you just save them you can make a lot of boxes trust me because you don't really need a lot to make it to make a box here here is a wave and I will also add a little small piece of acrylic here and I actually glued this not to a tab but the very front part of the box and you can use that it's like another tab for you and just glue that down and I just added another wave I thought it needed one more thing and that was all I could think of at the moment so here I'm adding a butterfly this is from heartfelt creations and again just kind of putting it where I feel it would best fit. I do put another butterfly up in the cloud and that's going to complete the box. All I need to do is glue down the little sentiment to the front flap and my box is complete. I think these are super cute. They do take a little bit more time than a regular card but if you really have someone special to send something to this is perfect. I mean I sell these so I know what people like and they always go for these boxes and you know that people just love interactive cards and this is perfect and you can really create any scene that you want. I've made a few of these boxes and I'm never bored with making them. So here's the complete box standing up and here I'm just going to add the sentiment. I'll go ahead and put some pictures at the end of the completed boxes and I'll actually show you the box flat in the envelope, how that'll look like. Here it is. So, um, thanks so much for watching. Feel free to leave me a comment and give me a thumbs up. I will really appreciate it and I'll be sure to answer any comments that anyone leaves me. So, thanks so much for watching. Bye.